I saw a strange sight. I stumbled upon a story most strange, like nothing my life, my street sense, my sly tongue had ever prepared me for. Hush, child. Hush now, and I'll tell it to you. Even before dawn one Friday morning, I, I saw a young man walking the alleys of our city. He was pulling a cart filled with clothes, both bright and new, and he called in a clear tenor voice, Rags! Well, this is a wonder, I thought to myself, for the man stood six feet four. He, he had arms like tree limbs, hard and muscular. His eyes flashed intelligence. Could he find no better job than this, to be a rag man in the inner city? I followed him. My curiosity drove me, and I was not disappointed. Rags, rags, new rags for old. I take your tired rags. Well, soon the rag man came to a woman who was sitting on her back porch. She was sobbing into a handkerchief sighing and shedding a thousand tears. Her knees and elbows made a sad X. Her shoulders shook. Her, her heart was breaking. Oh, the ragman stopped his cart. And quietly, he stepped over to her, stepping around uh, tin cans and broken toys and pampers. Give me your rag, he said to her so quietly and I'll give you another. And from her eyes, he slipped her handkerchief. She looked up and blinked from the, from the, the gift to the giver because he placed across her hand a fresh linen cloth so new and clean that it shined. And then the ragman did a strange thing. He put her stained handkerchief to his own face and he began to cry, to weep as grievously as she had done. But she was left behind without a tear. Rags! Rags! cried the sobbing, strong, intelligent ragman. In a little while, when the sky showed gray behind the rooftops and, and I could see the shredded curtains hanging out the black windows, the ragman came upon a little girl. Her head was wrapped in a bandage, blood soaked her bandage, and a single line of blood ran down her cheek. Well, this tall, strong ragman looked with pity upon that child. And he drew from his cart a lovely yellow bonnet. He said to her, give me your rag and I'll give you mine. The child could only look at him as he loosened her bandage and removed it and tied it to his own forehead. The bonnet he placed on hers. And I gasped at what I saw. For with the bandage went the wound. Only against his brow it ran a darker, more substantial blood. It was his own. Rags! Rags! cried the bleeding, sobbing, strong, intelligent ragman. The sun hurt the sky and my eyes now. And the ragman seemed to be more and more in a hurry. He called to a man he saw who was leaning against a telephone pole. He said, um, are you going to work? The man shook his head no. But the ragman pressed him. He said, do you have a job? And the other man said, are you crazy? And he pulled away from the telephone pole and revealed the right sleeve of his jacket. The cuff was tucked into the, the pocket 
He had no arm. So said the ragman, give me your jacket and I'll give you mine. The one-armed man took off his jacket and so did the ragman. And I trembled at what I saw. For when the other man put the ragman's jacket on, the arm stayed in the jacket. And now he had two good arms, thick as tree limbs, but the ragman had only one. Soon the ragman came upon a drunk who was lying unconscious beneath an army blanket. He was an old man, old, hunched, wizened, and sick. The ragman took his blanket, wrapped it around himself, but for the drunk he left new clothes. I had to run now to keep up with the ragman. Though he was weeping uncontrollably and bleeding freely at the forehead, pulling his cart with only one arm, stumbling for drunkenness, falling again and again, yet he moved very fast. On spider's legs, he skittered through the streets of the city, this mile and then the next, to its limits and then beyond. Oh, how I wept to see the change in that man, how I hurt to see his sorrow. Because I had grown to love the ragman. Every face had faded in the wonder of that one man. But I followed him. As a child who cannot turn away from mystery, I followed him. I, I needed to know where he was going with such haste, and perhaps to know what drove him so. That little old ragman came to a landfield. He, he came to a garbage dump. And I wanted to help him in what he did next, but I hung back and I hid. You, you see, he climbed that hill. He, he cleared a little space on that hill. And, and he lay down. He, he cushioned his head with a handkerchief and an, a jacket and he covered his bones with an old army blanket and he died oh how I oh how I hurt to witness that death I wailed and I moaned as a child who was without hope I had grown to love the ragman but he died I slumped down in an old junk car and I cried myself to sleep. I, I did not know. How, how could I know? I slept through Friday night and Saturday and it's night too. Then on Sunday morning, I was awakened by violence. Light, pure, hard, demanding light slammed against my sour face and I blinked, and I looked, and I saw the last and the first wonder of all. There was the ragman. He was folding his blanket so carefully. But he was alive. And more than that, he, he, was, he was well. There, there was no sign of sickness nor of sorrow. There was a scar on his forehead, but, but he, he was alive. And all of the clothes that he had gathered, all of the rags that he had taken, shine for cleanliness. Well, I lowered my head, and I myself walked up to the ragman. And I told him my name with shame, for you see, I was a sorry figure next to him. And then I took off all my clothes in that place. And I said with dear yearning in my voice, dress me. And he dressed me, my Lord. 
He put new racks on me. And now I'm a wonder beside him. The ragman. The ragman. The Christ. Those words were written by Walter Wangerin, Jr. They're powerful words, and obviously it is a resurrection story. On this Easter, it takes on particular meaning for us because normally we would gather in a church and we would be engulfed by the aroma of uh, Easter lilies. We would hear majestic music, the offerings of majestic choirs. We would sing the songs and we would hear the word proclaimed and we would return home and gather with family and friends and celebrate perhaps with a big meal. But this Easter is quite different. You see, the beauty of this Easter and the, and the true meaning and power of this Easter is not found in all of the things that surround the story. The, the power of this Easter is in the story itself. It is the story of Jesus who came as one who knew no sin, and yet he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. See, we, as the characters in Wangaran's story, often carry the soiled and tarnished, tattered rags around with us from all that we've known in our lives. We take those rags and we stuff them down in, in bundles and we carry them around with us everywhere we go. And they're filled with all kinds of rags. The rags of bitterness, the rags of remorse, the rags of resentment, the rags of grief, the rags of sorrow, the rags of jealousy. And we keep them with us wherever we go. We even bring them to church. We drag them through the doors and we find a place to sit and we sit our, our stuff down we sing the songs, we pray the prayers, we hear the word proclaimed, and then the benediction is pronounced, and we get up and pick up our stuff and take it right back out the door with us. But you see, the story of Easter is this. We are to leave our stuff with Jesus. That's the beauty of Easter. All of those things that we carry around with us, Jesus took to the cross. And if this journey on the road with Jesus through Lent has taught us anything, it has taught us one thing for sure. We've all got plenty of rags that we carry around with us. Well, maybe this is the Easter. That we take that stuff and we pour it out at the foot of the cross and we give it over to Jesus so that Jesus might make us whole, that Jesus might cleanse us, that we might find in the rag man who is the Christ one who gives to us new life. See, you don't have to be in a church to do that. You can do, you can do that right where you are. You don't have to be with a lot of other people. You can be with your family or you can be by yourself. And whatever it is that we've been carrying around, whatever that burden might be, whatever those tarnished rags might be named, we can give them over to Jesus. I invite you on this Easter Sunday to celebrate Easter perhaps in a way you've never done before and to hear the words of the, of the risen Savior. Rags! Rags! 
I take your tired rags. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 